Hey, I'm Zella Sage Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo, where today we're going to be here in the Indian forest building an aviary for eight different types of Indian bird. Now we're in franchise mode. We do not have eight different types of bird. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do it with these prop birds made by the incredible Drac and Jaguar X. And the amazing thing about these, they're all made from eggs and hinges and little pieces. But when you zoom out, they actually look like real birds. And we're gonna be using these along with the Indian peafowl to create an aviary that looks absolutely amazing from the guest path. Let's go. One of the key things for this build is gonna be ensuring that the habitat is full of sound and movement because obviously those prop birds do not move. We'll get onto that later, but firstly, what I wanna do is build the most realistic meshed aviary that we have ever built on this channel. We're gonna be starting with this wooden pole here, and I'm basing this on the bird safari at London Zoo. I've been in there a few times. I've got a lot of reference photos and we're gonna try and make a mesh aviary that looks exactly the same as that one. So we've got this wooden pole here. We're just putting it into where the habitat's gonna go, make sure it's the right height. That looks pretty good. And then we'll move it back here and start getting some work done on turning it into an aviary. The way the mesh works at the bird safari is that it's attached to this pole from a piece of metal. So the mesh is sort of draped off of the pole rather than being directly attached to it. So I've been through pretty much every small piece in the game and I think this one is going to work the best. We'll rotate it into place and slide it into the pole so that we end up with a hook that we can hang the mesh from. Um, and like I say, I want to get a draping effect on the mesh, which is not particularly easy to do, but we are going to do it. I've had so many comments since our little penguin episode last week on the troubles that people have with mesh. So I thought we could take a real deep dive into it today and really concentrate on exactly how to make the mesh look good in this game. We're not going to be using the actual mesh pieces. We're going to be using the netting pieces from the Oceania pack because we have some curved pieces like this one here and that enables us to get a really realistic draped effect on it. So we're gonna use one of the curved ones at the top so we can get the mesh to curve inwards so it does look like it is draped from that, that uh, piece of metal there. And once we've got it into position, we're gonna rotate it so that it starts to come in towards the actual pole and joins from the metal hook at the top to the pole at the bottom. I'm happy with how it's attached to the metal part, so let's switch to rotation and bring this in and get it joined up to the pole. So get a nice curve on it, we'll switch to the world axis so we can move it in a straight line and we'll get it touching the pole there. And then we'll get a straight piece of mesh in and start moving our way down towards the ground. Now you probably notice there is no way to join the straight pieces onto the curved pieces because they curve across all four sides, which is kind of annoying. But it doesn't matter too much because from the guest perspective where we're gonna be viewing the zoo from, you literally can't see the join. So once we've got this spun round and then joined on to the curved piece, it's gonna look absolutely fine. And um, these birds can't move, so uh, they're not gonna be escaping anytime soon. Now, while we finish lining up this mesh into exactly the right position, I've got a couple of exciting announcements to make. Firstly, I have finally bought a new PC. Yes, after lots and lots of research, I have a new processor, a new GPU, a new motherboard. It's just arrived today. I haven't set it up yet, but from next episode, things should get a whole lot smoother. And secondly, I noticed the other day that we have hit 6 million views on the channel, which is absolutely crazy. So thank you all so much for watching. I look forward to many more views on the channel in the future. All right, that's one side of the mesh done. Let's move on to the roof. So I want the mesh at the top to slant upwards to meet in the middle. We're basically going to make one part of it here and we'll have another pole in the center, which is a little higher than the pole we've placed in. And then we'll use that one piece to create the entire aviary. So we're going to get some more straight mesh on here. And later on, we're going to curve the entire piece so that the pole is further away from the path at the top than it is at the bottom. Again, just to replicate the bird safari and get a nice realistic look to it. We're going to get really close to the mesh here just to make sure it's in the absolute perfect position. And then we're going to start working on some support struts. So we'll be using the grasslands pole for this. Here we go. I've said this before, but it's the thinnest metal piece in the game. Absolutely vital for doing stuff like this. We're going to line this up with one of the pieces of mesh and then hook it into the metal bracket that we put in earlier. And then keep going down to ground level just to make sure this is all looking good. And then we'll copy it across and keep curving it so that it goes along the line of the mesh here and looks like it's attached to it. Sometimes I spin it round so that the arrow doesn't get in the way of where I'm moving it. It just makes it a lot easier to do. We'll get back down to ground level, make sure it's looking good, which it is. 
And then we're going to extend the roof so we can start getting this one piece of aviary to the right size. So I'll put another one of these mesh pieces on here. And again, just line it up nicely. And then we can check that we've got this the right size to cover the area of ground that we want the aviary to fill. This is effectively going to be the left hand side of the aviary. And then we'll just duplicate this piece so that we can get the right hand side in. As we move it, you can see we're encountering one of the problems that you get in Planet Zoo. Because we've built this out of loads of different pieces, the axis that it moves on is not straight, so it's really hard to get it to line up. You have to use the multi-movement tool and then try and get it in the right position, which with something as thin as mesh is not easy. There is a solution to that though, and we're going to do that now, which is to attach a grid piece to this little group. So we're going to take this concrete floor piece, attach it to the bottom of the Avery that we built, and put it in the same group. Then we'll just put some more mesh in so that this piece of aviary fills that floor piece. And then because we've got a grid piece as part of this group now, when we rotate it, it'll rotate on the correct axis to the, to the way that it's facing and make it much easier to create the other side of it. So we just need to drop a couple more grassland poles in to fill in this side, and then we can move this half of the aviary into position. There's the rotation I spoke about, makes it look really cool once it's slanted inwards like that. And now if we select it, we can just duplicate it, and that grid piece we put in means that the one side is going to line up exactly with the other and make things a whole lot easier to get into the right position. We'll delete the concrete pieces later, we don't need those, they were just to keep it on the grid, they're not part of the design. Now before we build the rest of the aviary, we're going to jump over to the other side of the zoo because we have a new arrival at the zoo today. I have finally found the time to put the extra climbing into the second part of this habitat, which means we have enough space to bring in a female caracal and wow, what a gorgeous animal she is. I can't believe I found a melanistic caracal on the franchise market for a reasonable price, but here she is. She is absolutely gorgeous. Cannot wait to see what the kittens look like. They might be the new cutest animal in the zoo. They'll certainly be giving the little penguins a run for the money. And it's great to finally have the habitat running as intended. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get that second tiger habitat built. But for now, it's back to the Indian Avery. All right, time to put the central supports in using more of this grassland pole. So we'll just run this down this first section. I've copied a few of them along just to make sure it's going to work fine. It's looking good, but we're just going to finish this one off before we start doing it. You can see it's starting to look good already. So let's put the rest of it in properly. So each piece just gets copied along and then lined up exactly with the piece from before. And then as we get to this huge Jungle Book inspired tree here, we're going to rotate each piece so that it fits smoothly around the tree. That tree is a big focal point, don't want to be covering that up. In fact, if you want to see how I built that tree and all the rest of the foliage in here, then check out the Sloth Bear episode. I'll put a link to it on screen now. This was all done when the Eurasian Animal Pack came out, starting the Indian Forest. So the little temple in the background as well, we put it all together before we built the Sloth Bears. All right, we've almost finished this side of the Avery now. It's starting to look good. So we're just going to put one more piece in at the back here and then we can rotate it and then start putting the other side in. So like I said earlier, this all lines up nicely now. We can just run all the way down here. Don't worry about those palms poking through the roof. We're gonna move them outside the aviary later and get some more suitable trees for our birds in. We just got one more last piece to place in here. Then we're gonna do a little bit of tidying up of the poles to make everything look seamless. And then we'll get that tall pole in that's gonna form the end of the aviary here. This is the same pole that we used before. We're just gonna raise it up a bit and line it up here and then we'll put an extra piece of wood on the bottom so that it still meets the ground. And then we'll get on to putting the last pieces of mesh in. So we just need to rotate these. These are the same pieces of mesh that we used for the side, but we'll rotate it and then slide it in here. And then we can just copy it across. Um, again, we can continue that sort of draped motif along this side of the aviary as well. So a couple more bits on this side and then we'll move it over to the other side and just rotate it in the opposite direction. Probably didn't need to explain that. <laughs> um, and then we'll just copy it down this side and then we have ourselves an aviary. Time to turn it into a habitat and get the birds in. So the first thing we're gonna do is run null barriers around the whole aviary. You've seen me do that loads of times, so we'll skip that bit. And once that's all in, we'll put a keeper gate in here so the staff can get in. And then we'll make some adjustments to this guest path so that it looks nice and still fits in. So we'll get rid of some of this wall. We'll move some of this bamboo around so that the staff can get in there. We'll copy across some of the log walls that we use on the other side of the path to block out the view of the keeper gate and make this nice and subtle. We made these walls for the Africa section of the zoo, but they're so generic, they work really nicely. They're pretty much anywhere, so I use them a lot. Make some adjustments to this so it fits in really nicely. And then finally, we'll take some concrete floor panels and cover up the join between the path. All right, habitat in, staff access done. It's time for the birds. 
Now, this is the selection of birds that I've chosen to go in here, all made, like I said at the beginning, by Drac and Jaguar X. We've got a good selection, mainly of water birds, so we can have them at the back of the aviary, because the further they are away from the path, the more realistic they're going to look. And then some smaller songbirds as well, that we can put in the trees with a nice flash of colour nearer the front. So I've put a concrete base into the pool, so that the birds have got something to stand on. And then we're just going to start putting these in wherever they look good, they're all designed to look amazing from one side, so you've got to be careful about the placement, make sure they're all facing the right way. But it's so atmospheric when you put them in here. I wish we had more uh, proper birds to use, but these work really well at the back of this habitat. And once we put the peafowl in, they add some much needed movement to the habitat as well, which looks really good. Now it's not just movement we need in here to sell this idea, we need sound as well. So we're going to have two ambient speakers hidden in the habitat. One playing birds of the jungle sounds and one playing a more subtle jungle sound. And the fact that you can see birds and you can hear birds, along with all the movement from the peafowl and the mist on the water, will really sell this idea. The problem with hiding things in habitats is finding them again, so it's time for Franchise Masters. If you're going to be hiding something into a habitat, what I like to do is group it with something that is not going to be hidden, like this big old tree here. Try and make sure it's an object that's obvious that you're not going to forget about. Name the group with something that's going to remind you of that, and then you can go into the group and hide the items you want to hide. So we'll take this first ambient speaker here and hide it underneath this feeder with the little bird sat on it. And then we'll take this one and hide it under this rock here behind this ibis. Thanks to Drac and Jaguar X for making these, they look so good. That's the speakers hidden, and if you ever need to find them, we just click on the tree and then go into the group and we can instantly select them. Let's get back to the build, which is almost done. Just the signage left to do. I've got these little signs from the Lima walkthrough. What we're going to do is take the habitat board and sink this underground so that the guests will still look at it and get educated by it, but it won't spoil the view. And then replicating the way mixed aviaries normally are in zoos, I've made a lot of little signs rather than a large sign. But looking back at it, it felt like overkill. So I'm just going to have the one sign, and I made a custom billboard that will list all the species just on this one little sign. Want as much visibility into this habitat as possible. And that's the Indian Avery complete. Let's take a look. I really like how it sits into the entrance without obscuring it, and it feels really light when you look at it like a uh, much more of a sort of drift netting than mesh like we normally build. As well as the main viewing at the front, there's a secondary viewing area up here next to where the scorpions are, where you can see down into all the water birds. And this is the main viewing, the guest's first glimpse into the Indian forest. And this is my favourite view. With all the movement from the sprinkler and the mist and the peafowl, it feels a lot more dynamic than if we just had the prop birds in here. But they still look really effective in the background with the spoonbills and the ibis. I love that sort of misty lake slash pond at the background. Got a close up of one of the peafowl here, just pecking about in the dirt. And then one final look at the water section of the aviary. I think considering the limitations we worked with, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Let's take a look at where we started today. I was already really happy with this, so lush, but now we've got the aviary in there. It just feels much more zooey, and it's great to get a realistic mixed bird species aviary into the zoo for the first time. Apologies for the shorter episode today, I have something very big in the works, namely the night house. I am hoping that will be next week's episode. We shall see, there is a lot to get done, but I've got a really cool concept, I think you guys are really going to like it. Here's the Explorers Club monolith, thank you so much to everyone who's joined. Hit the join button on the channel if you want to see your name on here, and I'll see you again next week for some more Planet Zoo. Bye.